before the video starts, make sure you follow our socials in the description and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Welcome back to the Offbeat Podcast, people. Back again this week, joined by a very special guest who has travelled a fair bit to get here. Harry Robinson, how are you, mate? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? I'm good, <laughs> mate. I mean, thank you for coming down. I mean, you've come all the way from... You live just outside of Wigan, is it? So, yeah, so I live in a place called Bursco. Um, I came from the studio. Like, yeah, in Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, today, um, which, I mean, the trains have been a nightmare. So mate, I, was, I, messaged, so I messaged you yesterday. I was like, I've bought a ticket, but, you know, things might not be good. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> on his best. Cause, I mean, the Lime Street trains are a bit of a... The, um, so I, I, we were in Manchester at the weekend, and all of the line... The line overhead lines blew up because of the storm, Fuck and they just cancelled all of the trains. <laughs> so was that so, for Adam's show? Yeah, so we yeah. were in for Adam's show, and then I had a hotel, uh, and and the person I was with, we, we stayed over, and then got the train back the next day. Uh, but that, that was only from Manchester to Liverpool, and that was like a an hour delay. Just sat there, yeah, it was manic. I've been seeing a few sort of comments about see, the person that you were with. Oh, and, um, <laughs> have you been seeing him on Adam's pitch yet? Yeah, so I, Adam, <laughs> Adam stitched me up a little bit. Uh, yeah, no comment. Yeah, but I, mean, all of the I com- was just saying there's likes everywhere. Yeah. I, was, I was like, better yeah, like, All the comments were like, because the whole thing on the podcast is that, like, because Carl said I've got a little wig and head. And then now people, a fella came up to me, because I was manning one of the cameras at Adam's show. Yeah, yeah the Apollo and a fella got a photo with Finn and then saw me didn't know who I was because I'm because I'm I'm not I, I don't have a level of fame at all you've only been on the, certain you, you're on the Patreon I'm on, I'm on all, you, but you've, you've I'm on on all the Patreon yeah. that's what I mean it's like it's, it's diehard like kind of listeners that know yeah. who I am I guess um, but yeah someone called me Wig and Fathead <laughs> and you were, I'll, I'll get a photo with Wig and Fathead as well and they just grabbed me and then you're which, like cool which is, it's like <laughs> How like, would you react to that? I don't know. There's a weird because because especially at the start, there's a weird novelty where like yeah, I mean, yeah. like, I wouldn't be trying to get on. You know, I wouldn't be working for a podcast or or putting stuff out with my face on it, like journalism wise. If I didn't have like a little bit that I, I liked the, the attention. I mean, you got <laughs> like, right, yeah. I mean, you literally yeah, have to. But like. then, yeah, I, I I don't know the that the weird, the novelty kind of hasn't worn off yet. But like, it's it's a strange thing, especially yeah. when I'm not because like I'm not even like you know. I'm certainly not in the top four famous people on that podcast. Yeah, I mean... So they, it's like, that's why I, I don't understand it a little bit when people are like, you know, it's like, oh my God, it's the specky fella that reads the emails. It's, I mean, it's the specky. I'll be, I'll be buzzing. I'll be yeah. like, yeah, cool. <laughs> it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't make sense in my head, but it doesn't make sense in, like my mum got asked by like, someone at the local pub that I when I walked out, that you asked, oh, is your son on this podcast? So then my mum got like That's very... That's mental. Which again, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, and I hate kind of mentioning it because it makes me seem like I've got this big... I don't know, but it's not a normal thing to... Kind of... No, it's not a normal thing. Especially thought... when you, like, you're like not like a pro comedian or... No, it's, it's only like... little hot spots in parts of Liverpool as well. Like yeah. if I have a drink in Pogues, like because people and, you know, yeah, pod yeah, fans yeah. go there or that kind of stuff. So... Yeah, so I'm, I'm not, not. I don't think I'll ever be used to it, but I don't think it'll last. I think it's like my 15 minutes is just kind of going on. <laughs> I mean, you never know, do you? I mean, you never ever know with, with something like, that, <laughs> yeah. especially with sort of like content creation, because like, yeah, it's, it's just astronomical. Into, I mean, maybe we, we might as well sort of introduce yourself. So you are like a, you make documentaries. Mm-hmm. You're a journalist. You're a content producer, yeah. aren't you? So you've had a bit of a mental last few years haven't you yeah I, I mean cause, you know I'm 23 so I only graduated uni this year and it's been a bit of a this year especially it's been a bit of a mad one um, but yeah so I, I was I was in the, the States for a year uh, studying and then I made a documentary and I was out there because that was always my dream growing up I was always and I am into Louis Theroux like that was the you know, I look a little bit like him so I just <laughs> modelled my entire she like, on she yeah, on yeah I was just him. like I want, I want to be him Um so then I just kind of did everything I could to, I don't know, I, you know, I started interviewing people at like 16 and stuff like that, which I was very, I, I think I'm very fortunate that I knew what I wanted to do. Um, Quite early well, on. So you early, sort of build uh, up to absolutely. it and kind of build your skills good. Yeah. You? I've got, I've got mates that, that still don't know what they want to do, yeah. I guess, you know, and that kind of stuff. Um, and then I kind of fell into the job that I'm in at the moment, which is, Again, I'm very lucky because it's a it's a fun job. I mean, but it's like a, but you're literally doing it like you used to. You did your job as a hobby, a little bit beforehand. Yeah. Like you because you used to send. So I, I've I've listened since Stephen Tries' first episode, yeah. and you were still sending in. You were known as a goat then. 
Like you, <laughs> you were firing it over lockdown and all sorts of all these questions. So that was so my when the podcast first started, my brother got me. My brother was like, "Get on this," um, and sent me the link. And then I again, I think maybe it comes from that weird little attention thing of like. I'd send stuff in because I think, I don't know, like I, I liked coming up with questions. I was bored at like uni, but then also when COVID hit, like I kind of ramped what up a little bit. What else to do? Exactly. Right, yeah. um, there was also a weird little buzz about getting your name read out and being like, that's a great question, that. Yeah. But then, I, I mean, the lads would say as well, like send more in. And I think it, it's a, w- a weird thing of like, I just, what, pestered them with questions, I guess, until I got... <laughs> John just bullied my way into <laughs> bullied you yeah. just kept going and going and yeah. going and it works so it, for anyone watching if you really want a job in the kind of content producing just email and email, oh, email I mean do you know what that's a good advice for it journalism though, as well it? it's great like, like just pester yeah but uh, yeah so that's basically I, I originally I did the merch so the original batch of mm-hmm. merch or like some of it was me not that it sold very well but it, it was me yeah. and then um uh and then I got, when I was in the States, I think I got messed off Dan. I was like, do you want to do the prep? Yeah. Um, so then I was collating the questions and and that kind of stuff. And because and, and, I, I guess I knew from being a listener, because I saw it from a different side to the other lads, I guess what I thought like it would Worked. work as. Yeah. Um, and I like to think that I have have that kind of eye, I guess, or mindset now i guess when the the episodes are on does sort of being a journalist help then do you Absolutely. Sort of, obviously like being a journalist you have to it's trends it's all yeah. about trends in journalism so do you reckon your sort of career helps you sort of being able to pick up with like different content like what's going to work and what's not 100 percent. i mean like obviously it's a different kind of thing because it's like it's what kind of bullshit can i just like yeah, wing yeah. about but then um yeah like like i because sometimes people would send in questions that were like slightly closed off i guess and and uh, you know, you'd want to, ones that are, I guess, a bit more broad and also stuff that is topical. Like, I don't know, it was a lot. I, I had, like, you know, I had a document that was, and I've streamlined stuff now or whatever, but like when I first started, I had a document that had like 70 pages of just like question, que- like a yeah. question bank, uh, which is why like some people get their question read out like four months after. Because <laughs> I was like, this is now relevant. I'll dip into that. But uh, yeah, so I was a bit, because I was, I was in the States and just like, that was like I, that was how I was getting my, you know, my beer money, I guess. Yeah, of course. Because uh, it was like working part time, just sift. It was a good, you know, it was fantastic, um, and I enjoyed just sifting through, I guess. But yeah, maybe I've just I don't know. Maybe I'm just a bit. What was it like going to university in America then? Because so you did one year there. Where, where, yes. where were you based at Sheffield, weren't you? Yeah, based in Sheffield. Studied in yeah. Oklahoma for a year, um, which was un. But the, Honestly, it's like what, a film, man. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's like you hear about that on films. Like that. cowboy country, it's just crazy. Everyone had guns. Uh, there was a there was a shooting on campus when I was there. Like a fella got shot in the head. Jesus. Just like so, it was just like next. I mean, like I to, so when I first arrived, my first lesson, a car backfired outside. And everyone in the class jumped. <laughs> Shit. Everyone that, <laughs> swears God, everyone in the class jumped up, and the teacher checked on the phone for you'd get like. I remember when they test out updates on your phone here. That was constant there if there was any crime. Really. And um. And, and the teacher jumped and apparently like the previous semester a frat boy went ra- round campus firing a gun in the air so she was on edge or whatever and I was the only one that didn't jump and I messaged all my mates at home I was like that's mental um, and then fast forward maybe six months this person got got uh, killed and uh, and I was interviewing like a religious like religious protesters outside yes. yeah, yeah. on the campus and a car backfired and I shat my kecks you were doing yeah and i and i was t- <laughs> i was like speaking to my mates i was like i've just been like my i guess my mindset of the world has just been completely sculpted by this idea that oh yeah and everyone i mean like there was like the, the countless amount like on we had because we did, I did the news out there we had te- tvs running with just like news stories of like shoes like yeah, yeah and no one really cares like, we it's were, normal over there. unless they get to like a certain size yeah it's just normal whereas over here like yeah, you, you hear about one knife attack and everyone's like, "Shit!" Exactly. Like, I mean, it it was because it was a thing as well. When I went to, like Oklahoma to put into context, every single county in Oklahoma, so like specific county, voted for Trump. Um, I think they were the only state, to, the only state, <laughs> only state where they had a hundred percent of the of all counties voted majority for Trump. Um, it's only the same as sort of like the northwest. 
like voting for Labour. Kind of, yeah, but they, like it, it, it almost is like a religion. I mean, as well, they're like Bible Belt kind of uh, religious about it. So, nothing, nothing will ever stop them. No, absolutely. So one I, of them, yeah. Well, when I was going over, there, I was like, this is someone else. Like, I'm, it vehemently goes against my politics, but I was like, this is someone else's space. I can't go in and be like, oh, you can't know, be I, brash, I'm, can you? You've got to be sort of yeah. understand. Well, not understand, but you need to sort of. That's, that's part of being a journalist, though, isn't yeah, it? No, absolutely. Like, you need to be able to interview people who have different opinions. Yeah. To you. But I, w- I went over there and the, the gun thing was the only thing that I'd kind of go, yeah, but it is mad though, isn't it? <laughs> like, no, 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 it's great. I've got my own gun at home. And like, like, we went to a gun range and the fella didn't even get us to sign anything because he was like, that's unconstitutional for you to sign. Like, for you to have to sign something to have the gun. So did you just pay the money and then did, did you the, pick out your own guns? Or you or like, yeah, so we, we, we asked him what we want, what we should get. We got a handgun and then we got... I some... bet you look like a proper virgin. Oh being like, my Excuse God. me, sir, which gun shall I shoot? I bet they're looking at you like... What Honestly, you they had a frigging like, Call of Duty wall that had this gun that had... Uh, assault what, rifle. Like, GTA? Like, yeah, like... With, 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 with camouflage on it. And it was this big, massive assault rifle. And we shot that and it's like... I When you're shooting, it's really easy, one, to shoot a gun. Like, like I've got the target at home and there's all these bullet holes in. Really, really easy. Um, and I thought I looked really cool doing it. And then you see the video afterwards and it's like, God, I look like a gimp. He's Perfect. bad, isn't it? Big assault rifle. Like, just I did the same thing, thing as well. Yeah. So I did mine in Prague. Yeah. Um, and I didn't re- I, I had um, an Uzi, but it was only like single shot. Yeah. And I was firing it. And do you know when something feels like a toy? Yeah. We all, we all came out afterwards and we were like, that Uzi was just a toy. Like, yeah. Obviously, we, we had like a big, I think we shot an AK. And that felt how I thought it would. It was yeah. dead heavy. Bit of a kickback, whereas yeah. an Uzi, you'd pop it and it'd just be like, like it'd be like a pop noise. Yeah, it, it was the same with the, like, it's it was really loud, it. so but it was, it, it kind of reaffirmed to me, it was like, if I ever lived out there, there's no way in hell I'd have ever gone. No. Because like, like it's the amount of people that like get killed by their kids or whatever, because yeah. they can just, because it's so easy to use a gun, holding it sideways, like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, no, like, uh, that was like a weird, but the culture shock as a whole was just like, mad. Like we went and covered a, um, uh, a state execution with with the uni wow. and it got cancelled at the last minute but like on like so there was a, a man called Julius Jones who was um, like if you if you kept up I don't know what you would have done but if you kept up with Kim Kardashian trying to be a lawyer this was the case that she was like pushing for Okay, and yeah. he was a black man in who, who was uh, convicted of killing a man in 1999 and was on, had been on death row for ages and, and Oklahoma had this big kind of wait um, for executions because it was being called unethical the way that they were doing it and stuff yeah. like that. And we turned up and they to cover it. Um, and they made sure, me and, and Adam, who was this lad I went on with, they made sure to take us as the British lads. Because one, they wanted us to get the full kind of feel of everything, but also there's a completely different... It's a different uh, approach to everything. Yeah, we, we had a different mindset to everyone else that was going out there and covering it because it's a bit normal. Yeah. And we went to this place called McAllister, which is like a town that is almost parasitic like to the prison like they completely rely on the prison um funds and, and stuff like that and we went and covered it and then it was like a funeral everyone's wearing black a lot of kind of hymns singing and stuff like that and then it was announced on the phone as we are getting in we get out with the cameras and it's announced that oh it's been cancelled by the governor the governor's gone we're going to postpone this or, or that they basically cancelled it and gave him life but said that he didn't have like a death penalty anymore. Wow. And it went from this funeral to like a street party in like 60 seconds. It was the most surreal thing I've ever seen because there it's just all these people like singing mad, like, you know, they, they, or just happy songs. Like there yeah, was, of course, there was yeah. you know, there was like, Oklahoma's the Native American state as well. So there was like Native American singers and it was just like this crazy party, but everyone's wearing clo- like black clothes and, protest clothes as well um and i mean like personally i believed he was innocent so i was kind of, kind of i didn't want i was like this you were is, semi-glad weren't you? you when you heard the news oh, I, was, I was i was glad that it got i was yeah. glad that it got cancelled because one i like i wanted I, I, I didn't want a man to die i i, I wanted to go along because of it's this big journalism story and, and whatever but there's no one in the minibus that was in the minibus going that was like, oh yeah, we want to see a man die today. Of course. But we just thought it was going ahead and it's like, it's experience. especially if you're in the States and you're a journalist, like that's the stuff that you're going to cover a lot because yeah. that, that the country is mental and, and <laughs> kills people. But like, um, yeah, that was unbelievably surreal because there was every camera in the world like there, like we were on Fox News, like the back of our heads holding cameras or whatever. Yeah. We were in the, in the center little circle 
Um, well, that's so early into your career, you're student doing. I that. know, and we and we got. How honest, did you how did you ever even go out there in the first place? So was it offered by Uni of Sheffield? Did you have to source yeah. it yourself? So so it was the University of Sheffield do like okay, and the same with all unions, they just have a study abroad kind of program. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Originally, I want I applied to go to Pittsburgh because I thought it looked like American Liverpool, and I was like, I just want the American culture, but like. We were going to not do journalism because the journalism campus was like ages away. Okay. So anyway, we're going to, we're going to go to Pittsburgh, but Pittsburgh pulled out due to COVID. Um, all of Australia pulled out due to COVID. Everywhere was pulling out, but Oklahoma didn't believe in COVID because they're all like mental Republican nuts. Yeah, they <laughs> so, were. So there was like... Shoving own... disinfectant into the, into the yeah, veins and all that. <laughs> crazy. So like, so, but Oklahoma was always the second on our options. Oh, so we nice. ended up going and I was like, I don't even know what, it's even there in Oklahoma. I know there's a musical about it. And that's about it. <laughs> and uh, and it's weird as well because when we got there, like there's like you know like locusts. Um, yes, yeah, oh yeah, no, yeah. no, it's cicadas. Like burrow, but they burrow into the ground. Whatever they made this weird like buzzing sound. Um, it was the night. The night we arrived was the night that all of the cicadas flew out the ground. Oh, geez. so it was like was a, it was like the pl- wall of noise. Yeah, it was like the and I thought this was like that every night. It was like the plague, <laughs> like in like the Prince of Egypt, <laughs> mental. Um, and the ground was like crunchy because all of the grass was dead because it's so hot. It was like forty degrees Celsius. Jesus. Uh, and then it ends up being just the I don't know, just like mental like in terms of the the best possible. Because a lot, a lot of the students that went out there and did like ballroom dancing, like you could take that as a as a as a module, and they did like uh, this module that was basically just going to the gym twice a week, and all these sit off ones, and then they went and travelled. Whereas everything that I did and everything that my mate did was all journalism, because it's the number one journalism uni over there. Oh, and I was nice. and I was just like, I want to get as much experience, don't yeah, you? Yeah. So it's like, just, it's, it's stories. It's, it's how. I was, it's what I mean, your portfolio now must be. It's, it's a little bit mad. Like I, I don't think about it too much, and I hate be like I hate coming across as like I guess cocky in a little way. But like I, we when we left because I was like what twenty one yeah when uh, or twenty two when we left no twenty one twenty one when I flew back and I was a bit like this is a bit mad that I'm twenty one and like we just won an award with the film uh, with like the first documentary and then like there was all of these this stuff that I'd done out there and all of the interviews that I kind of done it was like coming out of uni with this huge portfolio because I just kind of got, did loads of extra stuff, I guess, on the side. It's getting stuck in though because that's what yeah. you need to do. You need to push yourself out. Like, I've, I've had people go up to me and say like, oh, I wish I could do what you do. And my response every time is, why are you not doing it? Yeah. But that's the whole reason why I started this. So I've told this story before so if, if I'm repeating myself, mm-hmm. I do apologise. But So the reason why this has started is because I watched TGF. Do you remember TGF yeah. Bros? They did a Jack Mate and one thing really stuck with me, and it was, I think it was Jay or Romel, yeah. one or the other. And they came on and said, there's two people in life, people who say they're going to do something and people who do yeah. it. And I listened to it and I was like, do you know what? I've been a bullshitter for the last yeah. like, few years. Like, what am I doing? Like, why am I saying I want to do this? I want to do this. I've got a dead end job. I don't know what I'm yeah. doing. And then, and then I was looking to, because I now work in sales, but I did like cold calling. Yeah. And, they, and one of the feedback I got before I went for my job was, you need to be more... Your presentation skills need to improve. So yeah. I thought, I interviewing people would be good. Or I just doing a podcast, yeah. put myself out there. And I never look back and it's... Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, I before I started, like, I was really socially awkward. Um, but obviously I knew I wanted to do journalism. Of like, course, especially, yeah. Like, public speaking and stuff. I, I, like, I'd just like, I'd get like, like my, my lip had shaken. Yeah, and like it'd be that, yeah. yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, but when I was about 17, I was looking to go to uni. I was looking at Sheffield because Sheffield was, so the other time was the number one journalism uni. Um, I think still is. And we uh, great city and, as well, isn't it? But unreal. As I a student, love Sheffield. As a student, a lot of hills though. Oh, it's, oh mate, hills are my, a joke. My calves had like six packs. Like, it, <laughs> but good, unreal student city. But I was seventeen. I emailed Dan Walker. Nice. Um, BBC Dan Walker. Yeah, BBC Dan Walker. Now Channel Five Dan Walker. Um, <laughs> Apologies, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and saying, "Oh, I'm, I'm going to go to the uni that, that you went to and, and that kind of stuff." And I was like, "Do you have any advice?" And and here's some of the writing I've done. And he was like, "Just do." He went one start a podcast, which I did off the back of that advice, and Sick. then also said, "What just, a nice guy for applying." I, I was like seventeen in, in like in college, what a nice guy. and he went and he went just just do as much extracurricular stuff as possible because you know I'd, he didn't put it in these words, but every man and their dog walks out with a and woman <laughs> walks out with a journalism degree, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but they don't walk out with a body of work alongside it. But it's very easy to do that body of work because I was doing that. At, like the first interview I did, I was 16, and it was with Tony Bellew, who's now very relevant at the moment. <laughs> Class. I, and, I, and I... Love to interview Tony Bellew. So, so I, w- I was writing for a website that I won't name, 
that got shut. I was like writing sports articles for them, but okay. they were all a bit crap. Or I was in like year ten, and they folded because the owner was robbing in images off Google Images to use in the articles, and it was all a copyright thing. Yeah. But I never posted any of the articles anyway. Like myself, um, and one day all of my work just kind of went. I had like backup to it, so I had to make my own website to put these things up. And then my dad was like, "Why don't you interview someone?" And I was like, "That's stupid." I want to just say no, like I'm doing my GCSEs. And he was like, "Well, you know, if they say no, then what's the, there's what no have you lost? there's no yeah. arm." What have you so lost? the first person I did was Tony Bellew because he was about to fight David Hay. Nice um, for the first, first time for the first time. And so did you just mess uh, email his management company? Just me, yeah, I just emailed him. Oh yeah, emailed his. I just went. Down, on, yeah. on, I, I found a, like a kind of secret website of Tony Bellews that was like, oh, I guess it, it will be like TonyBellews.com, whatever. But it was blatantly just like archival. He never updated it because why would he? And found a contact email, messaged it, and within the day, I got an email back that was like, yeah, you know, if you do it, you know, you can interview Tony. So I, I just sent some questions over. He got it back, and then I wrote it up. And I've not read it since, but like I imagine it wasn't the best piece of writing. Um, or best interview maybe, but then that was like, oh, I'm on the, so then I did uh, Ricky Hatton the week after, and then just- I've tried, I've tried reaching out to Ricky Hatton, I've not got there yet, but- <laughs> He was he was very I'm very weird. friendly to, I was si again, I was 16 and Ricky Hatton agreed to- <laughs> Mate, and every City fan you ever meet has met Ricky Hatton, has got story <laughs> Ricky Hatton. I met Ricky Hatton, he's, an, he's a, such a nice guy. Yeah. Everybody knows, like, so I'm from Ducking Field, which is just yeah. about, about 15 minutes away from here now. Um, so I've grown up and around the corner yeah. for Ricky Hatton all the time. So like every man and dog knows Ricky Hatton. And yeah. he's always at away footy games. Like if you go to Wembley, you'll see Ricky Hatton. Yeah. It's like a, he is like I, I don't know if you've got it's, it's like he's, in Liverpool you probably see like James Redmond and stuff everywhere, don't you? Like he's <laughs> he's like the figure where you're like, oh, everyone knows Ricky Hatton. Yeah. Just, yeah. Ricky's just everywhere. <laughs> yeah, he is just everywhere. Well, we I mean, used to wear his like city trunks and everything. Yes, didn't yeah. What's out the blue moon? He's like he's like, a cool hero. Um, but yeah, he, he was he was the second person to kind of take a chance on me, and then and then I spammed it, and then at one point I did it to someone who used to be at Jonestown, the cult that Wolf, yeah, the, nice. the cult that um, killed themselves, and uh, and then I just went down cults, <laughs> and then that, that, see, I was seeing about the cults. It, so you've got a new documentary coming out as well, yes, um, and I watched the trailer and I watched it. And I thought this. Mental. I mean, obviously, we're not going to spoil it too much, but yeah. do you want to just explain sort of like the basic premise around it? Yeah, absolutely. So it's called Mother's Ruin, uh, Unmasking the WMS COG, which the WMS COG is a, a group called the World Mission Society Church of God, and they're basically a church that believes that a, an elderly woman living in South Korea is God. Um, and there's loads of branches around the world, they all donate a lot of money to the church. Um, a kind of, you know, allegedly a lot of it filters back to the the um, the woman uh, who they call it Mother God. But yeah, so I I, I did I, I basically kind of did it in tandem with uni because I had to do nice. like a dissertation. But I set out I was like I'm going to do a long documentary here. When I say long, I mean like it ended up being thirty minutes. I I didn't want to over egg it because I feel like it's very it's possibly the most important bit of journalism I've ever done because I spoke to like forty odds like survivors of the group wow. that, that left which was like a weird like emotion it's like a, you also get like emotion fatigue but you also feel like you can't you don't deserve to get emotion fatigue because all these people have been through they've lived it's like, it yeah, yeah, yeah been through a hundred times worse is this than, internationally have you yeah so a lot a lot of the members were in the US a lot of them because it was a lot of um, a lot of Zoom calls and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, you know we, we spoke to people in South Africa and then, and people in Korea and and I said, wait, me. <laughs> but I had like mates that helped me film, um, film like the, so we basically knocked on at the church and I tried to get a comment from them and they basically, in short, told me to fuck off. Yeah, yeah. But they're very secretive as a group. You won't see lots of advertisement for it, but then they'll be out preaching. Mm -hmm. And if you're in Manchester by the Arndale, you'll see these people. Um, and it, it seemed fine on the, on the kind of front. And then when you go into the church, they basically like uh, you know there's a lot of accusations of gaslighting you know accusations of like uh, force not forced but like pressured abortions like they don't want people yeah. having kids because it takes away from the amount of time that they can spend preaching which is then money that goes into the church as which means that they're minted um, they're also a little bit litigious so um, it took me ages to get stuff kind of cleared legally because I wanted it to be airtight yeah. 
because they sued a woman for about a decade for 12 million. Wow. Um, or they, they, they tried to sue, sue someone for $12 million and then the legal battles resulted and that went on for a documentary sounds like it's cost you a lot of money. It, it, do you know what? It had, it, I, I went back and forth to Manchester quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in terms, again, like it, so the camera was, I borrowed from the uni. Like, I, I you know, I, I grew up like in, in Skem. Like, <laughs> like I'm a working class, like, lad, you know, in terms of I'm not, I don't, I've never had the financial backing. Like, I'm still saving up for kind of a proper camera now. Um, so I, like when I did my first documentary that was borrowed cameras from the University of Oklahoma yeah. this was borrowed cameras from uh, University of Sheffield um, I had my mates film it who I just bribed them with food nice. uh, and paid for their travel so it was like a couple hundred quid and then I, we ended up winning awards at film festivals that kind of got me that back that then went on kind of the entry fees to film festivals but of course, it, yeah, yeah. it was all worth it Um but yeah, no, that it, it, both times it's been, because you, people, you don't have to pay people off to interview them. Like people are willing, especially these people who, they want their story to be heard. And Survivors, I'm, aren't they? Yeah. They and, want to be heard, yeah. And their story hasn't really made out of their little inner circle of like, as much anyway. The, you know, there's no mainstream documentaries about this group. Um, same with the, so I interviewed a Hebrew Israelite group in Oklahoma. And they're like, they were uh, classed as black supremacists, mm -hmm. classed as a hate group. They wore like, they, they, they were like African American men that wore like full body armor, <laughs> and Jesus. like Jesus, one fella who was like six foot five, and he had this gold chain with an AK forty seven on it. And everyone's got sunglasses on, uh, <laughs> so that was a bit more hands on that one. Which that was available, the real Black Sabbath if you want to watch it. Uh, I got fe I got felt up for weapons a lot of time by them as well. <laughs> Do I, I <laughs> But, but again, that was like, I, I never... How are you, 23? I, I, <laughs> Do you know what? We've just spent half an hour where i <laughs> This has been the least I've ever spoken in a podcast. And I love it. And I'm sorry. I, I'm no, prone no. to waffle. No, I <laughs> love this. I, the best podcast, in my opinion, is when the host doesn't need to speak because they're just listening to stories. And I'm sat here in all like... <laughs> what a life you've lived I've been gossip <laughs> you're from Skem there, there, there might be some you know uh, black supremacist groups in gossip <laughs> you never know honestly they might keep if, it quiet if there is <laughs> you could go on them. the podcast <laughs> more than I'll invite you down myself uh, but I'd love to do a follow up with the with the black um, would you give it, it like 5-10 years do you reckon I'd, I'd get so, so the, for, I mean I've never told this to anyone but basically after the after it came out I got home I got a DM off one of the, the people that I uh, interviewed like who were part of the group and they went are you ready for a part two and I was like oh well I'm in the UK now so but there's branches in the UK Class. that I'd love to if they can get me in that of course because it, it was a very weird one because I like they don't like they, they don't like white people in terms of that they you can't be white people aren't allowed in their yeah, temples and stuff like yeah, that yeah, yeah. um I mean, supremacy is, is they're like religious zealots, really, but they yeah. believe in kind of this black superiority. Um, and I kind of almost bypass, I got more access than, than any white journalist I think could ever dream of because they saw me as British and not white. Oh, okay. Because nice. they'd never met a British person before. So they're kind of. So they were interested. Yeah, yeah, if I was a white. And also, I wasn't trying to like. It wasn't a hit piece or whatever. Like yeah, and you're not, you, you're not trying to kind of like for example like Nico Amalina did a very famous yeah. piece didn't he where he went to the most racist place in, yeah. in, in, in the States but like you don't have like a social media following where you're, you're purposely trying to yeah. make them look bad exactly. I bet they're, they're probably looking at you thinking he, he just yeah. wants to educate well not educate he, but he wants to kind of get to know us a bit and I suppose they, they can get to know you as well and I, 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 I say in the film like these are hateful like I don't try and like go I want to have the fence but they are hateful but it's more coming of a place of like, if there's any way to even understand why someone's hateful, of if course. that's even acceptable. I mean, when I edited that documentary, because again, it was all just me on a laptop, I used to have to like export the documentary, uh, what I had of it, like oh, when I slept and then in the morning I'd have to watch it because I couldn't watch it as I was editing because my laptop couldn't handle it because I had a free laptop for being like epileptic from the uni. <laughs> so it just couldn't <laughs> cope at all. Yeah. It was like wearing and stuff like that. So then... Um, yeah, but I, I felt really kind of almost ethically uncomfortable. Of course. Editing it. And I got like a, a buzz off that because it was like, I'm obviously doing something right. Whereas this one that I'm doing now... If is, you feel yeah. something when you're watching something, 
you've done your job well, haven't you? Exactly. I wanted people to kind of be conflicted with themselves with the with the first documentary I did. Um, and I think I kind of achieved you that. You got that from Louis Theroux, because that's what Louis Theroux oh does. Oh, my God. I've read his books and all sorts. Yeah, yeah. that, that just... is what he does to a T. He likes to get you thinking about your yeah. opinion. I don't think everyone's got an opinion, but... You need, yeah. to, you need to I suppose the way you need to think about it is you need to make sure that even the person who is the most on the fence guy if you can make him have an opinion yeah. you have done a perfect job well the, the term that Theroux uses is lovable bigot if you can find someone who is inherently dislikable yeah. and all of their views if you are a moral person you can't stand them and you make them seem likeable on film then you've done enough to kind of it's, yeah, and it gets a lot of criticism. You've done enough to kind of sway people, I guess, and, and make people feel conflicted, but he gets a lot of criticism by, by people who don't like Theroux's kind of documentaries because at the other side of it, he's given a mouthpiece to people who maybe shouldn't have. But the same way, it's like, I disagree with that rhetoric a little bit um, because if you don't ask questions, then these groups just kind of stay in the shadows and get people who... I mean, simmer, don't yeah, they? Simmer away. It, it's yeah. one of the main reasons I wanted to do this film when I, when I stumbled onto kind of this church it's like me doing this might it, it could stop one or two or three people from joining the church um you know which isn't the, like I, I did it because I'm, I'm interested in this group but like if that ends up happening i mean or, or you know if, if you li watch everything in that documentary it's a benefit find out yeah find out about the church and then still want to join it's like that's on you I and mean, you, yeah. you, people should have all of the information kind of out there before they make a decision yeah definitely Mate, should we have a little break? That sounds good. Sorry for waffling you, Mate, that chewing is, your ear off for honestly, 30 minutes. that was great. <laughs> Love that. Um, second part, want to dive into a bit more on sort of like the content side, but have a word side. Yeah, absolutely. I want to talk about your future as well, because you've done a lot. But yeah. But let's look forward and see what's, gonna, what's to come as well, definitely. Fantastic, thank you. <laughs> Welcome back to part two, people, and we are back. So, we were having a little bit of a discussion in the break, and weren't we, all about sort of like the podcasting world. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had a few questions sort of come in, sort of asking sort of like what your typical days are like on the podcast. Yeah. But what are your days like when you're not filming the podcast? Because you do Mondays and Wednesdays, don't you? I, I mean, the, the schedule kind of uh, fluctuates around, yeah, yeah. but ma mainly, yeah. Yeah, so what do you do like throughout the rest of the week? And like, what's like, you you traditional non-working day for you uh it's a weird one because like i'm in liverpool a mm. lot of the time uh do you still like, live in skem or uh, we've, we, my, my mom's just moved to wigan yeah and my dad lives in, in bersco and i like i still live at home in the month so I'm, like, yeah yeah, yeah so you can. i sometimes go back and forth which i mean i'm 23 and i'm going back and forth to <laughs> <parents' laughs> houses, but you know we move and um yeah like like you know a lot of the work i'll do will be done in the studio nice yeah, um yeah. Because otherwise, I just find myself just kind of like procrastinating, and well, I, like I, because I enjoy the work and I do all the work, and and that can, it, can, it can be done at home, but like otherwise, I'll just sit in my room and and do it, and it's like it's a bit. I'd rather have my room as a place where, like, I'll sit in bed and watch films rather than me sifting through, because I enjoy what I do, but I don't want it to be like the, I guess you <laughs> should I, always keep I don't want to work. Yeah, I don't, no, I don't, I don't want to work where I sleep. Yeah, um, and there's not you know again I like I'm one of five, and I'm one of the oldest, so like the house is just like rammed. manic, and like which is weird. Like you know the aim is to to move into town, uh, and that kind of stuff. But obviously straight out of uni, it's just <laughs> building your way up into yeah. yeah. And, and, like, so did, did you do any like sort of like work for sort of journalism? Do you write? Or? Yes, I, I'll, I'll still try and keep my. T I, I need to do a bit more. A lot of my attention has been on the documentary, of course, yeah, um, yeah. and a lot of kind of like weird kind of paperworky stuff that that uh you don't really see i guess the, yes, the way yeah, for. Yeah. um so that's been most of my effort but like when i can I, I do that i also do like um graphic design oh nice um there's something which is something i fell into uh but like all of dan's tour posters and tour graphics were me <laughs> Class. so like that is Again, which is, I'm not trained as like I'm. Oh, so you, I, what? So have you done like a course, or is it just self trained No, you, no, self. I used to. Yeah, it's the same when I made the merch or whatever. It was all just like nice, yeah, yeah. Because I'd piss about on on Photoshop. Yeah, you can just mess um, around, can't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you know, dance. So that, you know, technically, I'm a graphic designer as well, and I'll, that's my other, I guess, income. Hmm. Um, uh, and same with like like Dan's subtitling. 
for his, like I'll do that. Cool. So it's all like not very exciting stuff, but that's the you know I'll keep. There's little like tidbits, little jobs here and yeah. there that kind of keep you um, ticking over. And then, but I'm all, I, just, I can't stay in. I hate staying inside, or I hate staying at home. So I'll have to be doing. You know, even the, even the fact that like Scam United played around the corner from my house. So like I've got a mate who's a big Scam United fan. Mate, Scam is so interesting at the moment. So I I interviewed two very lads. Yeah, uh, I interviewed uh, Benito and Jack. I know Jack really well. Um, and I said on there, I was like, "What the fuck is Scam?" Because I'm so I'm a big, 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 big fan of football. I love the yeah. non-league system as well. But Scam are just one of them teams. I've always heard of them. Like, where the fuck is Scam? It's on the outskirts of Liverpool, isn't it? Can't, not really. It's more than the outskirts of Wigan. Oh, but is it? Scam right, okay. is a you know, people from Skem sound like me, <laughs> where I don't sound like someone from Wigan. Yeah, yeah. But like as a football fan, I support Wigan because Skem was built as a, a bit like Milton Keynes. It was okay. built as like yeah, an yeah. O- built as a new town, but it was an overflow town. Yeah. Which is why there's a ton of roundabouts everywhere. There's like no traffic lights in the whole t- town. Um, and everyone there has, you know, a, a lot of scousers will kind of like, but they have like some sort of kind of, not a scout identity, but like there is heritage there like people yeah a lot, the word you're looking for is newly wool no yeah okay, it's, it's, it's people who, but i mean like so it was built like what maybe the 40s so it is, have, have people moved from central Liverpool it was like out? after the war i think right, it was a okay. um it was like an overflow town for, for liverpool and everyone went there it's like famously you know quite um run down a little bit in terms of like not a lot of investment has gone in and a little bit higher recently like you know people in scale will know that We've been promised a, a we'd, be, we'd been promised a cinema and a railway yeah, for, yeah, yeah. for twenty years. They had doing when I moved to Scam when I was like five. Uh, we only got the cinema like two years ago or last year, and it's not it. And there's no rail like you can't really get to Scam unless it's the buses. So like, yeah, <laughs> it's, Scam, it's, so Scam's it's, a bit strange. It's a mad place because obviously I, I, so I follow like non-league football and stuff. Yeah. And how the fuck have you got Pascal Chimbond as your manager? It, I just so like, I. <laughs> so, uh, there's. I, I mean, I don't know how. For the full disclosure, I don't know how. Of course, he was yeah, yeah. But I think he was eager to just get into management anyway. Right. Okay. But there's a, a fella called Mark. Who, the only reason I want to mention him is because he, when I first started getting into journalism when I was sixteen, seventeen, he was a big. Uh, he used to run a. He used to own or was the chairman of Ashton Town or Ashton United. Oh, nice. Ashton Town Football Club, um, and he'd host uh, charity matches like Wigan versus City Legends, Wigan yes, versus United yeah, yeah, Legends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did all of that, um, you know. He, he's one of football's good guys. He's one of the world's good guys, really. But he would mi- let me do the press for it oh, as nice. like a sixteen. But then I'd get interviews with like, uh, you know, Brian Robson, class, and like, like yeah, yeah. just like my like I'd, you know, I'd interview as a Wigan fan. I interview Roberto Martinez three, oh, cool. three times before I was eighteen or something. Like I was interview. I interviewed him when he was Belgian manager in the lead up to the World Cup, and he was just in Ashton playing a football match. The the man is the most connected man on planet Earth. Um, and he signed Pascal Chimbonda for Ashton, but when because he Pascal used to come to these charity matches, so it wouldn't surprise me if 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 that sort of way Mar- you had that link to it. I, I love non league at the moment. Yeah. So like, at the moment, I, I found out like John Macken is Witten Albion's Witten Albion's yeah. manager, or maybe just signed Matty Loughton, who yeah. played at Burnley like yeah. two years really? ago. Yeah. Matty Loughton's now played for. So I know Ollie. I've interviewed Ollie on neighbour, a goalkeeper, yeah. great lad Ollie. And I was like, what? I'm one connection away from Matty Loughton. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm two connections away from John Carew. Okay, Do you know that's, what I mean? That's so strange. <laughs> it's, just, it's so odd when you think about stuff like that, but I, I love the world knowing because it's yeah. so mental. And uh, obviously he's got his five game ban or whatever he got. Like, I, I, th- like, I think that'll get rescinded because I was at that game that he got banned yeah, yeah, yeah. for. Uh, there was rumours that he, I mean, like I saw the big t- what, tussle and then he got sent off. I think there was everyone in the terraces said that he grabbed the goalkeeping coach by the neck, mm-hmm. like <laughs> Barnold Wick Towns goalkeeper. <laughs> coach. I don't know if what happened, but yeah, like I, he's very passionate. I think Pascal. Yeah. Um, I'd get it. I would. That was their first game he managed or first league game. Scam hadn't won in twelve. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, they're in the same league as um, G and E, aren't they? With Gossett. Yeah, well, they had a yeah. so they were also in the same league last season and then the season before with Macclesfield. And they were chasing Macclesfield for like the title. That's mental, that. Um, which is just like, and then the, 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 you know. See, New Mac have signed. They've got an Omar Niasi who went for like yeah. twelve million. Yeah, he scored, scored four in his debut. I think he scored actually got four in his debut. Like, yeah, there's a bit of a jumping quality. I, <laughs> I was like, what, what's he doing there? 
But uh, yeah, because well, I mean, Michael Smith have that kind of money anyway, don't they? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, savage in it. Yeah, Probably savage. Yeah, yeah savage, and, and I think you know they had like my mate was going like. Oh, I think he went Macclesfield away, but they have like a real stadium. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Scam playing behind the big Tesco in Bursco. <laughs> behind the big <laughs> Tesco. Not even in Scam. <laughs> so, like, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a mad one. I'm going to come Scam. It's got, got, we've, it's got a, little, we've got to go and have a, have a watch a game. Some, cause... some diehard, like, you know, there's a, there's a fella there who um, just lives and breathes Scam United. Yeah, yeah. Went to watch Scam United play at Wembley in like the late 60s against Anf. Field, or Enfield mm-hmm. uh, Enfield Town yeah I think so in, in the amateur FA Cup or something yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and like I, this this fella has like four season tickets to himself and then buys a ticket every game just so all of the money's going to money's the club money's going to like, the club like yeah. you, you don't get those characters really at, you do, do in, in, in some parts but at non-league I think is like those people that will do anything to keep a club alive yeah I mean I was you know I was watching Wigan you know as a Wigan fan Wigan have been an ad, admin twice yeah 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 um, or been in administration properly once, I guess. Uh, and you saw a lot of that then as well, like people kind of coming out uh, to try and help the club when the club was like kind of on palliative care a little bit. Like, you know, I remember having phone calls with long, long, long kind of supporting Wigan fans who were like, who were in the know, who were like, I don't see us getting out. To we the could end die, end yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. We, we could do like, all, yeah. Literally, I don't see us getting out to the end of the week and then it was a bit miraculous. But um, yeah, but I, I think you get a lot of that in non-league as well with a lot of kind of die-hard fans who will, you do anything to do anything. Keep it, yeah. it's, well, they're all volunteers, aren't they? They're all like yeah. the, the club secretaries are volunteer, and you and you have a groundsman who are volunteers. People who are behind the bar are probably volunteers. As yeah, well. exactly. it's mental in it on league football. I love non league football. It's so interesting. Sporting Wigan. Yeah, that's that's. Do you do you only follow football? Do you follow rugby as well? No, I don't follow rugby. I do this follow. you're the first person I've ever met from like Wigan or yeah. who do, who isn't into rugby as well because rugby's yeah. the probably the biggest sport in it I would disagree with that as a Wigan fan <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but like I, I think a lot of people that there's a big rivalry between, between and I, I'm not as knowledgeable because I never grew up in Wigan of course yeah, yeah. so I'm not as knowledgeable but it, it, it mainly stems from the fact I think that uh, the the people who own the rugby way back when tried to kind of kill the football yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the football eclipsed the rugby with kind of proper success Premier League, into, yeah, yeah Premier League and the FA Cup and stuff like that um, like I've it, normally I've met a lot of, I've met a lot of Wigan fans who are Wigan Athletic fans and then St Helens fans or Lee really? or something they won't support like I'd, 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 I'd argue that the rivalry between the football and the rugby is, is a lot more volatile than like Wigan the, yeah Wigan yeah. And, but I mean but maybe that I'm, I'm seeing that from, from different eyes because I've got mates who are Bolton fans so I can't like, yeah of course it's one of those yeah. ones where like you know, there might, there'll probably be some some topless football hooligan from like <laughs> Bill Inge who's like, "Don't you dare! We'll never be friends with Bolton." <laughs> but like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, there's a weird there's a weird relationship there, which is like, but the fella who now owns Wigan, yes, owns the rugby. Oh, so so, so he's trying so. he's trying to create this unity, I guess, in the in the town. Um, again, like it, it's one of the, like I, I've always grown up a Wigan fan. But I've never lived in Wigan. Grew up in yeah, Stan, of course, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is why I sound like this and not like. No, but proper, proper pie eater. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, proper I on, pie. but I put on the accent when I'm doing chants and that. So <laughs> you've, you've got, got, you've got, got to. Kind of have to <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm, so my dad just take me to Warriors games. Yeah. So my, my dad was always into rugby league, and it was a case of what's near to us: Salford with City fans. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, <laughs> so straight straight to Wigan. But to be fair, I've done a few Salford games. Like, I'm not. A, I'm not a die-hard fan, but I yeah. like the sport. So if Salford played at home, me and my dad don't often say, yeah. we'll just go and watch him. Or, yeah. Right, Wigan. I, I've done a few Wigan aways, actually. Yeah. It's quite fun. Well, we're, Wigan, what are Warriors, Warriors away? Aways, yeah. Oh, wow. So I've done Leeds away. Rugby League special. Yeah. I've done, Hud- <laughs> done Huddersfield. I've done Saints. Um, it's weird, isn't it? Like, yeah. How you can drink on terraces and all sorts. Because like, that's the thing that I find mental about Wigan so much is because obviously... Football team and rugby team use the same, but there's so many different rules to football, and there is yeah, rugby. absolutely. It's right, polar opposites, isn't it? But I've been like, you know, I've, I've got a mate who plays football, and we I went like Port Vale away when he was playing uh, at Tranmere, and um, uh, that was like you you'd still kind of yeah. get in, it, it, you kind of get in, encapsulated a little bit by the by the atmosphere, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the, football's very infectious anyway. That yeah, kind of yeah, crowd-wise, um, 
although I am like diehard Wigan. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, I've got like I, my my brother uh, who's thirteen, like dead small, dead skinny or whatever. And he's now wearing the Wigan kits that I had when I was nice, like, okay. But I wanted to be a goalkeeper growing up, so I've got like, these. OG like Chris Kirkland, Chris Kirkland with like DM. with the old bad John like the Ali old Ali Wigan Ali 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 Bolton. Was, uh, was Bolton was and Wigan, but he's a no. Wigan legend. He hates Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> I like yeah. that. Well, I, I talk about this the other day about him. So we were mates always have a joke where, like, for example, like, we were with Ruben Diaz a chat with about he hates Man United. No, he doesn't. No, but I'll, <laughs> I'll actually hate Bolton. Yeah, I'll, I'll live and die by that. <laughs> Watching me doing Bolton appearances in, uh, what, 25, 30 no, years? No, he's a Wigan legend. Right, man. <laughs> Glad. So, uh, we want to talk a little bit sort of about the future of yourself, because yeah. you've, as we've learned throughout the podcast, like, you have fluctuated between so many different sort of avenues. A little bit, yeah. The media world, like, yeah, we'll yeah. branch it to the media world, yeah. obviously being a journalist falls into that. So what's next for Harry Robinson at the moment? Are you wanting to go more into... So obviously you've made your two documentaries now. Yeah. Is filmmaking your passion now? Are you looking to keep with content or interviews? So so doc- documentaries have always been my passion. Um, and, and that's always the end goal is that for me to do documentaries. It's one of those ones where it's always been something I've planned for. Okay. Whereas me ending up working for Have A Word was never you something... Into it was, yeah, yeah, it was never something I planned for. And then I'm just having... At the moment I'm having... the best time that like I'm happy just to kind of ride ride, the, ride this out and see how yeah. it goes because it's one of those ones where like you know when we talk about it like I, you know I go into work um, like it's not work do you know what I mean like I, I go when I'm in the morning I'm looking forward to being in Yeah. like especially when I first start I'm still now but like if I know there's a good guest coming in or if if, if you know where the vibes like it's good, a buzz isn't it it's a yeah. buzz like I'll be on the Sunday looking forward to work on the Monday yeah. and very few people get that luxury so I don't want to throw, a, you know, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that like, oh, I'm going to start looking for like documentary jobs or whatever. Um, well, I suppose the beauty of what you do is because you are technically you're employed, but you're still working on self employed based on doing two days a week. I suppose you have the ability to do side projects alongside your fun work. Yeah, a, li- a little bit. I mean, like have a work. So like we're in the studio two days a week, but like there's a lot of work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like. Uh, it, it, it's one of those ones where it almost becomes a little bit the amount of plates that we're spinning because of the ambitions of the podcast of and the ambitions of everyone. Um, but also there is that kind of freedom a little bit and like, you know, I was doing journalism work at uni and then prepping the podcast whilst I was at uni. Right, yeah, yeah. So, so like th- that freedom is a, is a luxury as well. Um, you know, and to, it's one of those ones where if I get safe, like they go, oh, we're doing it, we're filming a documentary, do you want to be crew on it or whatever get a bit of experience I can take those uh, those kind of opportunities mm-hmm. which as well like helps the pod because like it can only benefit if I have more kind of yeah, of filming course. skills I mean, and, and stuff like that it's flying in a pod at the moment like, I it's, know it's, it's, it is literally <laughs> they, they don't need me to go on training right? no of course yeah <laughs> I mean I, and it's a good core team as well and as I was saying yeah. like, everyone's got different skills that always yeah. works as well so and obviously with your journalism background, you're now bringing in that sort of journalist sort of aspect that yeah, was never bit. there before. Well, obviously, like, so Finn, Finn did uh, broadcast journalism mm-hmm. at uni. Carl uh, started a journalism degree. Um, I think changed the criminology. But he, like, so there, there is like a, a li- little kind of, like me and Carl used to talk at one point about like, because I know like shorthand. Okay. Uh, which I'm the, like the note taking, yeah, like yeah, scribbles yeah. and that. <laughs> I mean, like I don't do it. Scribbles and yeah, that. Yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can tell my short and teach you that. Um, yeah, so so there is like a weird little because like, there there is journalism aspects that make a good podcast. I mean, yes. obviously, re- so like one of my big roles is kind of like research, and you'll see it for for kind of maybe eagle eye people who do watch the podcast. You know, recently it's been like. Uh, for instance, if you watch the Willow White one, at one point Finn goes, or, or Carl goes like, yeah, but you ate cats, don't you? And I've just got like a dossier of like f- mad facts about them, like talking points. Do I'm loving it at the moment. Yeah. It wasn't the Willow White one, it was the one before where, who was it? Who was it? The, Ray Bradshaw. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> you could see when the camera kept cutting to Finn and Carl, they were knocking each other, being yeah. like, they're talking about our prep here, we don't need yeah. to do anything. And we just sat there while we're talking through the whole prep. So, yeah, because like, I mean, especially the. <laughs> 
uh, the kind of researchy stuff. Yeah. Like you'll get like there's a point in the Willow White one where they said the cat thing and then turn around to me and I always flex at them because <laughs> yeah, I'm like yeah, yeah. I'm like I'm buzzing. I've I've actually hit something that's relevant because yeah, yeah. like I'll go. So like my plan for my kind of process for that, like I'll go to the gym and I'll go on the treadmill, and then say if you know I'll try and run however much, but then okay. like I'll I'll like speed walk a little bit and do all of oh, and do the all research oh, whilst nice. I'm doing that, like that. Um, just to get like because when I came back from the US I was like fat because I just ate like <laughs> shit food the entire time I was there because like I'm veggie and there's no veggie options out there yeah so. Yeah, so so I, I, like I'll be on the treadmill and just be like list, you know, uh, just reading old articles about people and 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 sifting through <laughs> like old. You gotta go through like everything, don't you? Try and find something that's like because you're only gonna find like two or three kind of gold dust bits out. Yeah, you? but you've got to put time into. Yeah, it. whereas like that, we were very kind of um, transparent with it with the when the Danny Davis episode. Yeah, I just got in touch with like Gary and Bobby yeah, and, just, yeah. and just like give me some stories to kind of. <laughs> to, to kind of uh, I guess a shit up <laughs> Danny yeah, 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 yeah. like give me some embarrassing so that, and I was like and we, we introduced it as like we've got some embarrassing stories about you kind of thing so that was but, such a scouse episode as a man club when I was watching that I was like I'd got it, no idea <laughs> it was a scouse studio that. when I yeah. was in 50 like, there was like 50 minutes to pass and I was like I've got no if someone came in and was like what if you just watched the last 50 minutes I wouldn't have been able to answer a word so I was like, <laughs> I've enjoyed it. I've laughed, but I don't know what's happened. Just good vibes. Great Just vibes. Good scouts vibes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, I, I always say this as well. I don't know if you would agree with this, but like scouts and manks, mm. it's so similar. Yeah, well, like, I, that's why no one get. That's why I don't get along. Well, Ad, Adam had a had a great bit about this ages ago. Um, talks about basically that it's just that they robbed each other's work yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And, and all the people that Liverpool don't like went to Manchester and all the people that Manchester yeah. like went to Liverpool and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's weird because I'm, I'm speaking out of turn a little bit because I'm like, I've got like family from of Liverpool. Of course, from Liverpool, yeah, yeah. But like for me to to say that I'm from Liverpool would be just a, like I, I said it in the US, I was like, yeah, I'm from where the Beatles are from. Yeah. yeah just like, because yeah, yeah. otherwise but there's no... you said it over there, you'd be out. Oh my God, I'm battered. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm like, because like Scam is like, uh, the scam's almost like so wool. It's not even classed as wool. It's classed as scam. <laughs> like there's wool. There's like across the water wool. Where it's like trying to make rovers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like scam is like, oh, you're from scam. Like, <laughs> so, you know, like I've said to, I've said to people that I'm from, like I, I say I'm from scam, like I kind of grew up in scam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, I didn't, didn't go to school in Scam or anything. That's like my favourite thing, too, in a way, then. So, where I sit as City, I'm in the yeah. well, I'm in 114, which is just a little half what you see on TV next to the away yeah, fans. Yeah. I sit in there, so I'm three seats away, so I talk to the away fans. Yeah. My favourite thing is when we play Everton and when we play Liverpool and calling them a wall because there's nothing that offends a scouser more than yeah. calling them a wall. Yeah, especially if they're it's a Liverpool fan, because a lot of them they probably are. are. <laughs> yeah, they are. Everton, not, no. Everton get more angry, yeah, which I absolutely. like. Ever, Everton are, they're scouse. They're yeah. all scouse. Mean, there's not one person in that way end that isn't scouse. I'll stand by that. Because <laughs> why would you love... put yourself through that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, just love, I just love calling them wolves. I, I, yeah. They get so angry because that's like the prime insult. Whereas it doesn't work over here. Like one of them said back to me, oh, yeah, lad, you're from Stockport. And I was like, yeah. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> I've got an escape post, I don't even care. Lad. So there's all, uh, so maybe get a bit weirdly like nerdy. So I studied like accents at, at college nice and, okay uh, well, so I, did like Eng- a I, did, I did English language but like a big a big um, chunk of that was accents and dialects nice the most interesting thing I've ever uh, learned shout out Nigel who taught me it and uh, he uh, watching. he yeah that, it was so fascinating but there's three accents in, in the UK that are getting stronger as time okay. goes on whereas all other accents it's called dialect levelling and they're becoming softer and everything's oh, kind everything's, of sound in the same. Yeah, everything's leveling up. Yeah, but, yeah. The, but Geordies, Scousers and Glaswegians really, but yeah. kind of like, like strong kind of Scottish areas are getting stronger uh, because there is more of an identity. And that's why when you go to, like I went to school in Ormskirk, you get loads of people in Ormskirk who sound, like I had people I went to school in Ormskirk who sound almost over Scouse. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah, tell yeah. that they're not. Yeah, yeah. From the, but like they're up, they're put because everyone's putting it on. It's sense of identity. Just, they yeah, want to be from there. Yeah, because everyone wants to be from there. Whereas, like, I think people from a lot of big cities in the, you know, like people around Birmingham, and maybe again, I'm speaking out of turn, but they're not 
like longing to be from Birmingham. They're yeah, happy yeah. to be from where they're from. Yeah. Whereas people from around Liverpool, and again, it's a generalisation, they want to be from Liverpool. Same yeah. with like people who are around Newcastle want to be, have that Geordie identity. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like you'll have Rangers fans that aren't from Glasgow, but they want to be like, oh, I'm Glaswegian. Oh, yeah, of course. That yeah. Kind of, so you'll get, or, or Celtic fans or whatever. But I just mentioned it because I, I know a Rangers fan who's who's not from Glasgow. See, I, what do I love about online is you can never say your opinions on a few subjects. Yeah, and Old Firm's one. Old of Firm them. is that one. You can never say your opinion on that because you are wrong no matter what you say. Yeah. If you're not from there, you're wrong in yeah. whatever you say. And it's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you threw it out with me. I grew up Catholic. I'm joking, I'm joking. But uh, yeah, and that was that was fascinating, and it, and it really falls into that thing of like, it's why every, it's why like you can't deny that there's a Scouse twang to like the kind of scam accent. Of course, like yeah, yeah. obviously any anyone from Liverpool, any true Scouser can sniff that out. But like, I you know I'll, I'll go down south and people will assume I'm from Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, and I go, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's, 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 people are the same from down there as well. Like, I, I work with loads of people who live in and around sort of Greater London and they always just say they're from London. Yeah. And they're not. But also it's, it's, it's a weird thing where it's not an identity thing. It's like a London's massive thing. It is, yeah, yeah. Because uh, there will be people who have strong identities, but I mean like everyone in London sounds the same. It's, they I mean, all level out, don't yeah. they? It's like, for example, like, you could go, like, people who live in St. Helens, Skem, mm. and Liverpool, which is, what, 20 minutes between yeah. all three of them? So polar opposite people. I, absolutely. It's mental. Yeah. Like, so, even here, like, if we go to... St- I, I can tell you who's from Stockport, who's from Manchester. Yeah. Well, like, but people that- can... People who listen to... Like, you can tell what part of Liverpool people are from if, if, yeah. you, if you have, like, a tuned ear to it. Um, I could do the same about Manchester. I, yeah. So like, where, where I sit in city, so I, I'm like just from outskirts. So I'm not actually from Gossip. I'm from near like Ashton area. Yeah. So um, I can tell when I'm in the city end because obviously there's a lot of Gorton. Yeah. A lot of Gorton area, and you can tell who's from where. Yeah. But it's weird how you have that twang, don't you? Where yeah. you can the little dialects or little ways of yeah. saying things. But the problem I've got at the moment is because I'm listening to so much have a word. I am getting scout scouts words are now in my vocabulary. Webs is the one. I say, yeah, I, I, I've always used Webs is a great word. I think it is both, but I say it to my mates sometimes now. And like I said it to my missus and, and she was like, Why are you saying that word? Like no one else yeah. says it. And I'm like, because it's now my word. Like I now see that as like It's good it, because people who as well as don't you? Yeah, people who are from places that maybe don't have a stronger kind of accent identity and that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. Are a bit more malleable and they'll they'll soak yeah. stuff up like that. So, um, for instance, like I, I went to uni with a, a lad who was from like he's from like Tunbridge Wells, but he'd been kind of around everywhere. So he'd, like he had like a kind of a very southern accent. Yeah. But it it wasn't like because it's kind of a soft, not a soft accent, but in terms of like it's not a strong identity. No, yeah, yeah. Accent yeah. And stuff like that. It's Kent and, in it, which yeah. could be. But he massive. he started like, and again, this is from someone who has a doesn't have a Scouse accent. Yeah. But has a twang, and there was a girl there who's from like. Uh, who, who had a twang as well, but was both of us were wolves. And he started like having more sibilant T's, like kind of, kind of scouse, kind of. That's mental thing, that. Because he just spent so much time with us. Because during COVID as well, where we just like, kind of didn't leave. And uh, and it, 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 you just kind of soak it in, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I could go on about accent for ages. No, I love it. <laughs> I, like, I, I just find it so interesting. I loved it. I went on a, a podcast not long ago when we played Chef United away, yeah. and, I, and I went on there. And the amount of comments I got saying, oh, yeah, um, it's great to hear a Manchester City fan with a man accent. And I was listening to it, I was like, fucking get it. <laughs> but, but then I was listening to it, I was like, but I've got like, a soft man. Everyone knows I'm from Manchester because I don't have a man accent. Yeah. But I'm not mank. Yeah. As in, like, I'm not Gorton. Yeah. Like, I'm not H, like, yeah. proper Levenge, like, proper Manchester. Yeah. I'm like, I'm a mank wool. Yeah, man. Even, but but we don't have, we don't really have man rules because then we just see each other as the same anyway. Even. Yeah, but yeah, like, I, I find accents and dialects so interesting. And there must be, I bet there's a term like wool, like wool or woolly back or whatever that's like in like Newcastle as well about people who live like God, around be, aren't they? because like it is this constant. You know, again, I had, I had like people I went to school with that um, you could kind of tell that they would put on a bit of an accent because people wanted to seem like I, the Scouse was almost yeah, like equivalent to popular yeah. a little bit or that kind of stuff and then it's just kind of stuck 
like because there's a it's called like Lennerberg's window. Like when you hit a certain point with that age, you kind of don't soak it in anymore. Yeah, that's why course. people's accents kind of stick at a certain age, and they're they're stuck with essentially a fake Scouse accent <laughs> that they've tried to put on. Like it, it, it yeah, it's weird that's how that works. Good, it? Yeah, it's not it's not it, a good it one. Wasn't. It's definitely not a good one. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. So, um. In regards to your documentary, then, when is it out on YouTube? So, uh, Mother's Ruin, uh, the Unmasked of the WMCOG, is out uh, Sunday the 17th. Nice, and that uh, is on your YouTube channel. Yeah, the YouTube... I mean, if you follow me on Twitter, it's Rob O'Harry, or Instagram is Rob O'Harry. Um, but yeah, the, the YouTube... The, I guess the YouTube account's called All Out Attack, but if you type in Harry Robinson or... It'll come, kinda, it'll come, like, yeah, because yeah, I made... The back when I had to make up a blog... Okay. To to for to put all my stuff yeah. uh, on, that was I came up with all that attack. Cause I was playing FIFA at the time. I was like, <laughs> I was like, that was because of sport, and then it's now just loads of cult stuff on it, and I've had to just like lie and say that it's more profound than what it is. But I was just playing FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, I, I, this is called offbeat. It's because it was meant to be about sort of like music and yeah. sport, and I've just. I've now just gone completely into interviews. Yeah, exactly. We, we, this never started as interviews. It started me and my mate who was going to talk about music and sport, and then yeah. we started Indian people. And we were like. This is so cool. Like, I just want to carry on. I just want to keep going and going yeah. and going. Well, you Which, go with what feels natural. You go into yeah, your lane that feels that you actually enjoy as well. And you feel, it feels obviously you enjoy music, but what you feel, what feels natural to yeah. talk about, and and what you get a little buzz off talking about. That's why I went to a whole kind of ninety degree turn and just started speaking to like Cults cult and, members. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's just different. Like that's the, that's the stuff that I watch as well when I'm watching documentaries. Like yeah. I look for a bit dark, but like serial killers, like cults, yeah. drugs, any. You're most attracted to things that you're not like, or you aren't. Yeah, because it's a, it's a peek it's like into life, a, is it? Yeah, to peek into the window. Sorry to talk about you. No, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to peek into the window of stuff that you could just not fathom. Yeah, like, of there's course. no possible way you, you know, can ever d- <laughs> talk about yeah, like, of you know, or, or experience like. How can you, you talk know, about what it's like, like to be dr- a serial killer? Like, like, like never ever know. Or, or that kind yeah. of stuff, like. Yeah, like, I, I interviewed a pimp and that was just like, there's no possible way I would ever become a pimp. <laughs> but I just like listened to him for the whole time. I was like, mad. <laughs> this is so <laughs> mellow. It's so good. Um, so yeah, check, make sure you check out Harry on his socials as well. Make sure you do check it out on the 17th as well. Uh, if you are watching first time on YouTube, please can you subscribe and push in towards 500 subscribers. If you're on Spotify, five star review, really push this content out to more people. Uh, follow my social in the description. Make, thank you very much. Thank you on. so much, Luke. Really that was that. class. Oh, really? Yeah. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you very much.